clearly. So I'm just going to play it by ear. I'm just going to do the picture. And hopefully um, it don't freeze up too much. So we're going to go ahead and get started to God be the glory. I always say ain't nobody mad but the dirt because we about to expose some things. Okay. False prophets, false teachers, false documents. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. So guess what? Hey, hey. I'm trying to say, sound the alarm, sound the alarm. Come on, guys. We got to sound the alarm. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start with the song, and then uh, we're going to go in and prayer and then get started. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Glory, glory, bless your name, God. Holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, bless your name. Father, we thank you, O oh God. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, O oh God, that is due unto you, O oh God. We just welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this place, O oh God. Have your way, have your way on this evening. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, God. Father, we ask you right now, God, that you begin to soften the hearts of your false teachers, oh God, that is twisting your word and leading others astray, oh God. We, God, we ask you right now to help us guard our hearts from offense, bitterness, unforgiveness, and even self-righteousness and uh, anger. And especially if we have been uh, wounded by these wolves, oh God, please help us to find the balance between strong uh, boldness and your truth, oh God, as we expose the lies of these false teachers and warn others, oh God, and yet all the all the while that we, we assure that every word that we speak is rooted and grounded in the love for your those of their souls and God and the souls of the followers, oh God. We pray that even now that those that who are being to being tools of the of Satan to sow to sow decept that sow deception Father we will come to the to the that they will come to their senses oh God and they will flee from all evil ones, oh God, and then and stand firmly upon nothing to that is too hard for you, oh God, Father. Right now, Father, we thank you that they will stand firm on your holy word, oh God, and may you grant them, oh God, repentance, oh God. Allow them to have a repentant mind, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we trust and believe that nothing's too hard for you to do, God. We thank you, God, even for the class on tonight, oh God, as you begin to expose, oh God, as you begin to shine a light in the places that dormant the places that are darkened oh god in this season oh god in the mighty name of jesus oh god you are separating the weeks from the from the uh the weeks from the the wheat from the tear oh god and we ask you right now father in the mighty name of jesus oh god father that even now that the ones that are coming in oh god that you will uh, uh continue uh guarding them protecting them oh god from all harm and danger as they come in oh god in the mighty name of jesus oh god we thank you you oh god hallelujah honey name of jesus we thank you in jesus name we pray amen and amen amen well, guys i don't know if i froze in the midst of it but we're gonna go ahead let me check this out amen amen yeah it did freeze a little bit okay all right well i'm just gonna go into my picture i don't know what's going on but only because I see the words uh, come across, that's good. It's a good thing. Amen. 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 So I'll I just say all is good. Amen. Uh, so like I said, we're gonna be talking about uh, false document, documents and false prophets and teachers. Uh, it's gonna be a topic for tonight. But I also want to uh, kind of elaborate on last week. Uh, this is our last class, guys, and I just Thank you guys for being patient with us. And I, I pray that even now, as we take this uh, three weeks off, you know, just to be able to uh, soak in the word and begin to chew on what we have learned over the uh, past, what we, we've been in this class, I want to say about 10 weeks, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on it. But yes, it's been 10 weeks. Amen. So this is the book that we're coming out of that we're going to be finishing up tonight called Destroy the Works of the Enemy. It's a deliverance manual for Sp spiritual warfare by uh, John and Irish Degan Degando. Degan do okay so you guys this um this is a good book to, to have in your library uh to help you when it comes to spiritual warfare when it comes to uh delivery teaching uh it's definitely a good good uh book to have and then our next book that we're going to be starting up in first is our next class uh and my apostle Ivory hawkins highly recommend this book called the sears dimension by Jennifer Lo, uh, LeClaire. And so you definitely can order this through Amazon or you can get it through Kindle. 
uh, whichever is easy for you and convenient. But as long as you make it uh, the deadline uh, for the next class, you're going to be you could be able to get your book uh, before then. And the uh, next class, like I said, starts June the first. Um, and June the first, it's gonna. This is gonna be eight weeks. So we're gonna cut this book at eight weeks, June the uh, first through July the twentieth. And so uh, again, the book of the Sears Dimension. Okay, Amen. This is for the Sears. This is for the dreamers. These for the prophets. Come on, you guys. Amen. Dreamers. Amen. So this is gonna help you. And I like the fact that it's gonna begin to activate either uh, your prophetic uh, sight to see uh, the unseen as well. Amen. So we are going to wait on a few of my students to get in. I knew um, actually Elias had took off and everything. So she already called in, uh, text me. So I was waiting on Fran to kind of get in because she's actually getting off from work. So we're going to talk about the uh, the will of God for your life is the uh, last week um, lesson that we talked about. And just to uh, give you a, the scripture that I came out of was Isaiah 60, verse 22, Isaiah 60, verse 22. And uh, so, um, and Fran, let me know um, in a chat if you made it home and everything, because I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to make up some time to give you uh, time to get in and get your notes or you know, get in in a good position. Okay, so again, <clears throat> um, the will. Oh, amen. The will of God for your life is the uh, topic. But uh, but I'm going to talk to you about in 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 His timing, in God's timing. I will do it in God's timing. I will do it. Amen. See, if God has given you a specific calling but he's still preparing you for that calling. See, this is the sign that he is saying, my timing, amen, I will do it, amen. And then also know that if you are, are in need of God's deliverance, know that it's, this is the sign that is saying that in my timing, I will do it. So you got to understand even with deliverance, you know, a lot of times some people may go through three and four sessions of deliverance because I always explain to them, it's just like an onion peel. It's layers and layers has to come off until you get to the, the core of things to be truly free, get totally whole, uh, be whole in him. So, you know, a lot of these things have came in from, um, that's been in the bloodline that's been in there from ancient time you know on back you know so we don't know how long so uh what we depend on the holy spirit to give us the actual knowledge and 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 what's going on and to discern uh what is as i call the head the ring leader amen the ring leader okay so oh, I don't know what that was. That kind of was loud in my ear, but uh, just to know, you know, that, that as well. So, and also, um, praise God, know that in God's time, and like I said, we, 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 we also know that, um, what was I? Oh, if your heart is crying out for a promise, uh, which will be fulfilled in the next chapter of God's redemption story, this is the sign that God is saying, put your phone on mute. There you go, sis. This is the sign that's saying, in my timing, I will do it. Amen. Amen. And also know that, you know, I thank God for the blood. I thank God for redeeming us when we were out there and living in the world, living any kind of way and just, you know, off the chain, just a wreck. And I thank God for Jesus, for his, his blood that was shed to redeem a wretch like me. Amen. I, I am so thankful. And I don't take that for granted, you know, because uh, he chose me. Amen. He chose me. And I thank God that I answered the call. Amen. That's the thing. A lot of times we run. A lot of times we run into being rebellion, going against God's, bucking against God's word and what he's calling us to do. And we, you know, the enemy plus that, that, that seed of discord or that seed of deception and 
make it believe that you wasn't called, that you're not equipped, that you're uneducated, that you're not qualified, make it feel inaccurate. That's what he that's what he does. He stays on his job. OK, to try to keep you from moving forward and what God is calling you uh, to do. Amen. And, and, you know, he's a, a kill, a destiny killer. That's what the enemy does. He's kill, steal and destroy. So any way he can do it, that's, you know, he's on his J.O.V. So we have to know we have to get wiser. We have to know that the enemy's devices does does not change. OK, it does not change. So we just. uh also know that if your heart is crying out for a promise which we were fulfilled and uh, fulfilled like i said in the, ch the chapters of god's redemption story this is a sign that god is saying in my timing i will do amen and a lot of times we get impatient you know we we like waiting on something and we pray on and we, and we get discouraged and we also sometimes we get a little angry with god can we be you know can we be real in this situation we get you know kind of discouraged and be like well god you know you you said that you know you you this person you you know you're bigger than this and it's nothing impossible for you but why is this you know that i'm praying on is is on on the back burner why it's not being answer why is it not you know uh things you know not going forward for me and i'm just keep hitting hitting uh uh the wall i keep you know going down a uh, path and i'm not ma making it seem seems like sometimes i can't get go forward you know and and you got to understand a lot of things got you know the enemy of course is trying to you know infiltrate or stop things you know and everything but god's timing is always on time i just say a lot of times we don't want to be in that preparational stage that preparation stage is he's trying to get some things out of us trying to get uh build uh, build, build more character in us to make us develop his likeness his his you know his agenda you know and that's the thing about it you know we have to lay our our will down and grab gravitate to his you know god let your will be done you know it's it's, it's i'm sure well a lot of times we like well why am i going through so much why is it things like everybody else look like they happy and they moving on they they reaping a good harvest and da 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 and listen everybody got a, everybody's anointing you're gonna have to go through some challenging times you're gonna it's gonna cost you something you know what i'm saying because if you don't never go through anything guess what you'll never ever be able to say to somebody else that's going through and be able to relate and have some type of compassion for them to say hey you know i've been there i understand what you're going through i feel your pain trust me i you know and how and then they need to know how did you manage to get through you know did you just lay down and go you know get into the depression mode did you isolate yourself that you just what did you do you know no i just push forward you know i just like i said i i always call i say, I, I shift to another gear just like a 10 speed uh, bicycle you know you shift to another gear and you get more speed you know and I, I tend to move forward instead of going backwards because when you go backwards it, it just it's a place that it, it keeps you bound it keeps you you know in a place where it's dark you know and, and 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 that is not where God is you know want us to be he want us to move forward amen he want us to stay focus on what he has before us amen so that is so important you know when we know what god's will for our life you know what's our what's god's plan what's god's purpose you know you got to sit down and ask god spend that time with him and asking god what am i supposed to be doing what it you know what what is my gifts what you know those questions that you you're uncertain of you he's such a good father Trust and believe me, he will tell you, he will show you, he'll place somebody in your life to pull and groom you, pull those gifts out and groom you to be what God has called you to be. And sometimes, you know, those are the seasons that we just don't tend to want to be in. You know, I, I remember being under different apostles and pastors when I was going through uh, my process of learning um, who I was and the office that I operated in and the gifts that I, you know, also function in, you know, those type of things. So, you know, it was definitely God placing people in my life. I remember when I, you know, accepted 
the calling as an apostle, you know, an apostle is not, I tell you, it, you have to be sent. You can't choose that, that office for yourself. No, you actually got to be sent. So, I mean, it was like bishops and different other apostles was coming in my life and confirming that and telling me this is, you know, what God has you know, placed on my life and what they seen. And so I just said, well, I, I, I don't I don't understand what an apostle is. What do they do? So one of the bishops, to, uh, no, one of the apostles, uh, my mentors told me to get this book about, um, oh, God, it was uh, talking about the apostolic. And uh, and and everything in the book, as I was reading the book, it was it was like, wow, I'm already doing the duties. I'm already doing the work, you know, and it, it was kind of, you know, kind of like scary in a sense and kind of nervous all at once. If, you, if that makes any sense, because I was like I I was clueless about it, you know, but to God be the glory. And as I began to get in that preparational stage of learning what an apostle does and what it, you know, how it operates, um, I, I felt more confident as years went by. I said years, because that was a long process. The people that was with our ministry and everything and still with, with me and everything, they'll know that it wasn't an overnight thing that, you know, God pushed me into this, you know, it, it was a process. It was like a preparational stage, just like, you know, Esther, she went through a uh, preparational stage of just uh, being purified. Come on, come on. Y'all got to Y'all understand that you guys got, God got to purge some things out of you. Some ugly, ugly old nature. The old man has to be purified. Amen. So that's the same way you know, when we, when we go through that, those preparational stages, you know, or even I call them pruning, those pruning uh, processes, that does not feel good. You know, nobody don't want to feel like being stretched. Nobody don't want to feel those aches and those pains that, you know, you may have to endure, you know, some of us, you know, as soon as we get a, a, a splendor in our finger, we automatic, get, you know, start crying and start running and start hiding, you know, because the pain, you just feel like you can't endure that little small <laughs> splendor. And, and I can imagine and having a, a thorn in your side, how that may really, really make you feel. You'll probably really be like, uh, I didn't sign up for this pain. I didn't sign up for, you know, feeling this. Uh, I'm good. But, you know, I just say this, that God has already equipped us. We're qualified to get the job done. Amen. He knew, matter of fact, that you were capable and he chose you because you was the best candidate to get the job done. Yes, you was. Yeah, you really was. But see, you didn't see that in yourself. You didn't think that you was capable because you were hearing everybody else in your ear or hearing what the enemy saying that you're not. You're not this. You're not that. You can't speak uh, clearly. You can't speak effectively like everybody else. You can't, you know. Um, so, um Apostle, know that that even that are you already in position? You already yes. Is it is it me I, or can you hear me? I froze. I can hear you loud and clear. I just froze. Can you hear me? Hello. I I can now. I can now. Okay. So okay. <laughs> you you want to go ahead and you want to go ahead and share. So you got to leave. You said yes at six. Okay, no problem. We might have to go next week to finish this book because um, a few of them are out tonight. So just go ahead and give me your uh, whatever you got for last week lesson or even the video for the uh, for tonight's class. Share that with me, and then I'll go into the notes and I can close out. Okay, okay. I I didn't mean to to cut you to cut you off. I was just I was just like, oh my goodness. Okay, um, in God's timing, um, I will do it. And I just love how Apostle was, you know, telling us um, her calling on her life uh, when she was called to an, an Apostle. And uh, we came out of Isaiah 60 and 22. 
Isaiah 60, 6, 0, and 22, um, that it, it, it just talks about least of you will become a thousand small family ages scatter up and down. I, I'm just, I'm just uh, paraphrasing here. Um, Isaiah 60 and 22. And then also Revelation, Revelation 7 and 9. Revelation 7 and 9, that there was a, a great multitude that, you know, every tribe, every language um, before the Lamb, that, 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 there was a, that there was a purpose in Revelation. And uh, Zechariah 12 and 8, uh, Zechariah 12 and 8, um, and he was talking about, uh, you know, those that lived in Jerusalem, uh, that the angel of the Lord goes before them. Um, and, uh, also, uh, first Corinthians, uh, seven, one through seven, first Corinthians seven, one through seven, and that, um, and how it was talking about, uh, marriage and, uh, you know, that you submit to your own wife and to your own husband and, um, and that, you know, that, that that we should have self self control in 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 a in a marriage and also that we have spiritual gifts that we have spiritual gifts to serve others and god gives us spiritual gifts um, for the body of christ and um it came out of romans 12 3 through 8 romans 12 3 through 3 to 8 to be sober um and to think and that we shouldn't think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. And that, um, you know, we're giving grace uh, for these gifts, faith, serving, teaching, encouragement, giving, leading, um, and that we should diligently seek them and that we should do it cheerfully and, and to serve others with a, with a cheerful heart. And then also Acts 6, 1 through 7. Acts 6, 1 through 7, that, you know, there, there's a season that we go through seasons and that we should um, spread the gospel and that, um, you know, we should dwell among believers and to grow rapidly. We should be growing, um, you know, in the body of Christ while we're serving to make disciples, to teach, to minister and to have um, the biblical principles that, you know, that are our callings and our seasons. Uh, that that we go through these we go through these um, these callings on our life, and we came out of Galatians six nine through ten, Galatians six nine through ten, and uh, that we should not grow weary, and and due time we will reap you know to do good to everyone, and 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 you know sometimes um, when when you do get that way we do have the body of Christ. We have one another. We we shouldn't forsake the gatherings of believers, and that sometimes you know leaders do get drained out, and that we should get in God's pre presence um, to be to be refilled. And also, uh, we spoke a little bit about uh, spiritual attacks. That um, you know the stragglers, sometimes the ones that want to isolate themselves. Um, we were talking about you know, don't isolate yourself, uh, call someone who can, who can pray you through. And, and, um, you know, that, that's why we have other, other believers. That's why we have prayer line. That's why we have, we have these classes, we have the podcast, and to always stay engaged in the body of Christ, because once you kind of disconnect, your flesh will say, will kind of talk you out of doing doing something else and sooner or later you find yourself spiraling down to give yourself permission to not go to church to give yourself permission to not go to class to give yourself permission to not go to prayer so um, always stay in the body of Christ and deliverance um, deliverance you know is is for the desperate those that want want to change those that that are desperate for for um to to take to take a stand 
and that we shouldn't always, you know, we shouldn't compare ourselves to other people um, and that we continue to renounce and continue to come out of that cycle in our bloodline and, and with our family because family is always there. Family will always um, be there for you. So if you're going to take a stand, you might as well do it and draw that line in the sand and say, you know, things that the, the cycle stops with you. Um, trials, we talked a little bit about trials to counter all joy and that um, you have to go through them sometimes to help others. How can you relate to something that you've never been through yourself? If somebody comes to you, you know, about marriage, about their children, about finances, um, about their school, teaching new age, and you've never been there, how are you supposed to have compassion for that person? How are you supposed to, you know, have, have that fellowship to, to pray for one another? And also, you know, that, that, that sister in Christ will help you or that brother in Christ will help you to stay focused and to, and to, you know, write some things down because iron sharpens iron to write down what you need to pray about. What do we need to pray about, about the situation? And we came out of Matthew 5, 11 through 16, Matthew 5, 11 through 16, where it says, blessed are you when people insult and persecute you because, you know, they did that to Jesus and, um, and that you are the light of the world and that we should be that that lamp, that light on a lampstand, and that, you know, that, that, that light should illuminate your house, and I know the other day when my sister, when my daughter had a birthday party, um, uh, some of her friends came into my house, and they could, they could really feel God's presence in my house, and they were asking Tyla, you know, can we just kind of hang out here, <laughs> so, so you want you know, you want that, you want to carry God's presence with you. Psalms 23, three through five, Psalms 23, three, four, three, two, five, and that he, um, and that he, um, that he uh, quenches my soul and that, um, that, that we don't have fear, that we walk and we, you know, that we have, that we have, um, we have that anointing and the anointing flows from the head down to the bottom. It flows from your leader. It flows to the, to the people. It flows to the worship, worship crew. It, it flows to everybody else, but it always starts at the head. And we came out of first Peter five, six through 10, first Peter five, uh, six through 10 to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. So that, um, you know, in proper time that, God may exalt us, be sober minded, uh, uh, and to stand firmly in the faith, and that we may suffer a little while, but remember that um, eternity and that we stand confident and that we are established in, in God. And that um, a heart crying out, we talked a little bit about that, promises to fill, and, and, and God's timing is may not be our timing and I know apostle was touching on that when I came in but he will always be on time God is you know sometimes as as new Christians or baby Christians we think that God is a genie in a bottle and or sometimes people will portray that he is but through the process he's always teaching us something he's always you know trying to take something out of us He's always trying to teach us. He's always giving us revelation. He's always taking something out. He's always giving, sharpening our gifts. He's always doing something. He's always talking. He's always taking us from glory to glory because he's good. And um, sometimes that may, that may involve, you know, things that we don't like. Um, miracles, we did talk a little bit about that, um, that God is bigger. Uh, than than our situation, and we came out of um, Revelation twenty one one through five, Revelation one twenty one one through five, um, that you know that all things will pass away, uh, new heaven, new earth, and and that the earth will 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 pass away, but God 
God's word never changes. It never, he's, he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. And that, and that when apostle was talking about, you know, the blood that, that he never changes, that people may change, situations may change, but he never changes. So we talked a little bit of, about that last week about, um, you know, in God's timing that he has a plan for us and that if we're obedient and we follow his way, that we will always, always, always have joy and peace and the fruits of the spirit. Amen. 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 That's good. Well, um, Fran, I know she has to go. She got 20 more minutes. Mom was trying to get on. Her mother was trying to get on. Sometimes her internet is in, is kind of sluggish like mine. Um, Fran, can you can you at least uh, do the video? Did you get a chance to watch the video about how to, to what? Oh yeah, yeah. How to yeah, identify yeah. the false truth and the false documents. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, cool. That video it talked about um, Second Peter two and one. Second Peter two and one. How there's false prophets among the people and false teachers. You know that bring destruction to um, our foundation, and that even Israel had false prophets and and. Um, you know, they try to corrupt the reputation, the reputation of the gospel and false teachers, you know, bring heresy and heresy is anything that contradicts or twists the scripture and it denies Jesus. And that um, it also talks about swift destruction and and heresy always teaches that, you know, Jesus is not the only way. And that um, that Jesus, you know, sinned on earth. And we all know that that's not true. That is not true. Jesus is the only way. And Jesus was he was he was the he was perfect in every way. There was no sin in him. There was nothing. There was no darkness in him. But that's what heresy is. And that Jesus was perfect in every way. And that um, and that we are warned. Um, you know, that and false teaching and doctrine always brings deception and it always um, leads you astray to walk in the way of the world. And that, um, you know, that 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 these false doctrine and doctrine of demons, they blind, they blind us. And um, and they always say, you know, what what we want to hear. And I know the biggest thing is marriage. Marriage is one of the biggest things that are, you know, scripture is twisted and scripture is taken out of context and, uh, uh, and, it's, and it's twisted around what we want to do and what we want to hear and what we want to do for ourselves. So, um, so the enemy, you know, he's all about deception. He's all about uh, getting in people's ear and I like how they talked about discernment, how discernment will always protect you, that that you should, you know, your discernment should be sharpened, your discernment should be on point once you, um, you know, something that something they say or something they do doesn't resonate with Holy Spirit. And, um, and that's what they call wolves in sheep's clothing. And he came out of Galatians 1 and 10. Uh, Galatians 1 and 10, how it talks about, you know, pleasing the people and not God and how they say, you know, that they're good people and they water down the gospel message, you know, and, 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 and I love how, you know, my apostle and everybody that she brings on on the podcast on Tuesdays, they're so bold. They're so bold in what they believe. They're so bold in, in bringing the message and bringing the gospel. And, and you know, sometimes if, if they step on your toes, you know, you can either say hallelujah or you can just say ouch. But, you know, they don't water anything down. They bring it with fire. They bring it with passion. They bring it knowing that they know that they know that they know the truth. So, so false doctrines and false teachers and false prophets are are the complete opposite. 
and uh, the gospel message is to save and guide us to the kingdom and um you know and 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 false doctrines they kind of just you know yeah it's okay it's it's all right um it's it's okay and and they talk about you know being blessed and breakthroughs and they don't talk about about you know dying to self they don't talk about uh, the love chapter first corinthians um, they don't talk about um, the fruits of the spirit. They don't talk about dying to your flesh. They don't talk about, they don't talk about, you know, um, dying to yourself and taking up your cross because that's just too harsh for some people. And, um, and then, a num then another thing was little or no reference to Jesus. And they just talk about, you know, their selfish des desires and, 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 and everything is about them. And um, and how um, okay, I covered that one. And that um, they always talk about um, no no salvation. There's no salvation or repentance. And they don't you know they, they don't talk about uh, being sober. They don't talk about the commandments. They don't um, they don't talk about repentance at all. And that you know they they say it's okay to be in sin. It's it's okay. You know, we all fall sometimes and, you know, even, even the enemy talks about uh, the angel, that he's an angel of light. Even he knows scripture. So, so those, and he taught, he talked um, about the false doctrines of demons, um, 2 Corinthians 11 and 13, 2 Corinthians 11 and 13, and how a lot of these false teachers and prophets just, um, chase clout and they don't seek holiness they just want fame and political power and influence and they want followers for themselves and and they they don't lead nobody to Jesus they don't lead nobody to the truth so um he also came out of first Timothy four and one first Timothy four and one that you know that and the, and the bible talks about you know thing these will happen these will happen as we as we get closer, you know, to the last days, um, that that adultery will be okay, fornication will be okay, and that um, sexual immorality will be okay, and you know, and and uh, and if some of you follow Isaiah, I remember seeing one of his um, documentaries where he was covering um, the colorful alphabet um, teaching in a church. Now that really shocked me. That really shocked me. It just, it just, it, but the Bible says, you know, this would happen in the last days and that we should know for ourselves. Um, Matthew 24 and 5, Matthew 24 and 5, that many will come in my name and um, claiming promises. And some of them, you know, talk about money. They want money for healing. And Jesus never did that. If you read the Bible for yourself, he demonstrated a lot of miracles, but he never demanded money. And that we should know the Bible for ourselves and that um, we shouldn't be rooted, you know, in churches. We shouldn't be rooted in people and that, you know, because they change. They, ch I mean, look at Judas. He was a follower. And then all of a sudden, one moment, the enemy got in him and he changed. So a lot of people may start out with you just like Judas, but at the blink of an eye, they can change. Um, and that we should always be rooted in the word of God. And uh, he came out of Isaiah 8 and 20 that, um, you know, there's no light in the message and that there's no light in, the, in, in, in what they say. But, but we all know that Jesus is the only way and he never changes. He's always the same yesterday, today, and forever. So um, that that was a good that was a good that was a good uh, meet to 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 just really watch and and it's good to know because God says my people perish for lack of knowledge. So that was really good. That was if you if you haven't watched it, I encourage you to watch it. It's only twelve minutes. Watch it on your lunch break. Amen. Amen. Uh, be be like uh, Sister Alicia. 
and I yield my mic. I love when she says that. I, I, I'll be like, I say it's the opposite. I say, and I drop my mic. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Jesus! Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, she's on Facebook giving us all hearts. Love you, sis. Sister Alicia. She's watching us on Facebook live. To God be the glory. And she's our no taker over there. So that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Uh, Liz, yay. I know, I know. So Liz off today, so she normally do it on the Zoom. So I was trying to get some of them pulling one of those uh, guys off of Facebook to, if they had their book so we can read the book and finish tonight because it's only five pages long. But I, I just um, probably going to have to extend the class until next Thursday. But I okay, have already hold, released. Okay, hold on. If, 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 if I can get somebody to make my dish for the birthday party, I can stay. So give me like two minutes. <laughs> who's going who to make her a uh, dish at the last minute? I'll be like, I'll be going to church of chicken. All right, I'll make your dish. I'm going to bring some chicken, a box of chicken. Right. They, can make my, they can make my dish. I'm like, you know what? I got all the ingredients. Just make it for me. <laughs> oh, and she got the ingredients. See? Well, look, she, she, I know what she trying to do. She going to take them. Go ahead. Go ahead, sis. So what she doing is she taking advantage of this because, you know, she's wearing, she's running a marathon and she's training. And so uh, we had already talked about it. We're going to take this May. We're going to just, you know, in May, I'm going to rest. She going to train for the marathon that she has uh, coming up in October. So she have those Thursdays. Because you notice we we work Mondays through Friday at Healing and Mini Ministry. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we got prayer. Then Tuesday, we got the podcast. Thursday, we got the class. So we only off on the weekends, you know. And so she's normally traveling on the weekends as well. To somebody say... <laughs> <laughs> I love you as well, Apostle. This book sounds like a powerhouse, and I'm eating ch <laughs> church of chicken right now. Oh Lord, she making me hungry, yeah. She making me hungry because I'm just thinking of right. They got a Texas chicken sandwich on the Texas sandwich. Oh my goodness, to live for, guys. So now nah, I gotta stay away from the fried food for a little bit. My doctor said that got me on a strict diet. I gotta get back in shape. I gotta get back in shape. Amen. I was I was uh cheating too many times. Okay, so all right. Well, you guys know what time it is. Okay, and I got I got like? somebody to make my bit my dish. I can stay. <laughs> Look at God. Look at God. Well, well, I, you could have did the dish. Why I, I could have did the notes. I was about to do the notes. You know that takes me about what 20, 30 minutes. You know what I'm right. saying, sis? And then right. we, we could have did the book. You didn't read the book because it's only five pages long. It's up to you. No, nah, no, nah, I, I I can stay. I can stay. I can stay. I got somebody to do Amen. it for me. Amen. Look at God. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Well, I'm going to go ahead and start on the notes then. She's got a little time. See, that's what I love. I love my friend. Friend, look, she be like, look. She tells her boss sometimes when we do deliverance, we have to do deliverance sometimes through the day. And, you know, she works a daytime job. She tells us, look, my apostle needs me to work. Uh, so I, I just need a couple of hours off. And, they, and and her boss, so sweet, do you need my office? And, and, and volunteer and gives. I said, who, what kind of favor you got like that just could go? <laughs> Take two hours out while you on the clock, you know. Just but God, just just favor. So amen. I thank God for her. I told him I said I need me a, a, a few friends in St. Louis, okay? Hey, because we we be doing drive-bys, and I tell you, we need we need some we need some everybody be ready, ready to be because I tell them to be strapped and ready when we have to do them in-house deliverance amen well let me go ahead y'all so y'all know what time it is it's time to get your ink pens and your notebook out you guys already know that i always tell you guys don't come to the class without your equipment and your equipment is your neat your uh your your notebook and your ink pen that's what you need because this is some some good meat and i just don't want you to just not you know get all i want you to get all you can get amen 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 all right. So the scripture that I'm coming out, first of all, let me go ahead and say my title. If I hadn't to make a title uh, for this particular 
uh, lesson, I would say, please, will the real prophet stand up? Oh, come on. I'm about to throw my wig. Oh, I ain't got no wig on. Okay, I'm about to throw, if I did have a wig, I'm about to throw it out the window. Okay, but yes, my topic would be, please. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> come on down come on yeah. I, I don't mess with Fred see I don't, I don't mess with Fred because she amps me up she amps me up I'm telling she be like on the sideline like on the you you know when you make a touchdown and you got the cheerleaders on the sideline like come it, it, yeah that, that's that'll be Fran and you too and you too sister Alicia you too y'all y'all be definitely telling me come on let's do let's do it amen so yes yeah, so like again she wrote the topic down for me please will the real prophet stand up amen and the scripture that I'm coming out of <laughs> <laughs> she said let somebody else throw their wig out the window yeah because apostle got real hair this is my real hair these these my hair amen amen to god be the glory amen um but second timothy four three through four is the scripture second timothy uh four three through four and y'all already know because I, I i i use this on off the refrigerator i y'all hear this so much so much because this is just the end times where we living in what's going on it ain't nothing new Ain't nothing new. OK, so Second Timothy four, verse three and four said for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. Come on, sound documents. Come on. But having itchy ears, come on. They will accumulate for themselves teachings to suit their own pleasure. Flesh. Come on. And will turn away, I'm paraphrasing y'all, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wandering off into a myth. Come on, come on, saints. What are we doing here? Like she just said, we rather, I always say, we, we'll believe a lie opposed to the truth. We'll follow a lie quicker than the truth because you know why because my flesh hmm, my flesh ain't ain't completely dead here you know what i'm saying my flesh is overriding some things my flesh is out talking some things my flesh is negotiating with some things well well, well you know i'm just gonna i'm just gonna drink one more drink just my last drink you know it's it, it just one beer one beer ain't gonna hurt and i always tell people if you say fill with the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost resides in that temple, right? So you, you rather contaminate that temple by putting unclean things in it. Yeah, I said drugs, alcohol. Come on, sometimes food, because you know we can be addicted to food, gluttony. You know what I'm saying? Eating six times a day. Come on now. So I'm just using as an example, this temple, we should be trying to take care of it because it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the Holy Spirit. So I, I'm just saying, you, here you is. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. How, let me go ahead. So let me say this, that when we know that we're living in those last evil days, praise God, we, we, like I said, uh, the, the enemy already he gives a, a Grammy award for what? Twisting the word of God. Yeah. And that's why I tell you guys, we got to be rooted and booted, booted in the word of God. You, you, listen, because the enemy going to come and be like, what do he do with he? Well, did Jesus, real? I mean, did God, real, do he really mean what he said? That he going to, you know, really, surely, surely kill, you surely die, you know? So, and then you be scratching your head, be like, well, you know, maybe he didn't say that I will surely die. You know what I'm saying? Then, then it's no time, guys. What I'm saying is to sit there and negotiate with the enemy. It's not time for all that because what that does, when you start uh, procrastinating and negotiating with him, you, you, you're going to miss the mark. Marks. That's why we have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and so obedient at all times. When God said, "Do something," it might not sound good. It might might not be, you know, what you think it should be. I'm using it as an example. I I was using it uh, 
Lord might tell you, just go and hug that individual and tell them God loves you. And you just don't know what that person may have was going through when God used you to go over there. And then you get you get that individual start breaking down in tears, talking about I was just procrastinating. I'm no, I was just uh uh thinking about uh suicide or whatever the case may be, you know, committing suicide. So, you know, if you just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, he'll lead you. Come on. He'll he'll teach you what, what's the do's and don'ts. So you ain't got to you ain't got to figure things out what I shouldn't do, what I should do. Should I, oh, I should, I should, I know I could shack with him just for a minute, you know, a, 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 until I get my life together for completely. And then I'm, a, you know, going, you know, I'm still going to go back to church and everything once I, you know, uh, just shack for, just just for about a year. And then you don't put a stipulation on the live, how long you going to live and sing it. Come on. That's why we were talking about, you got to know the will of God for your life. And all, everything that you, sometimes you got to let some things go you're going to the people places all that you got to let it go because well, we say he is holy so we got to be he holy as well we got to separate ourselves from these un, un uh, come on these bad relationships come on these bad places you over here still trying to hang out with uh and you 60 years old trying to hang hang out with the thundercats or young thugs whatever they call them and, and, and trying to fit in and then trying to go to church and act like you, oh, that's a whole different story. Watch out now. Ouch. That's all you got to say. Is say, ouch. If it's touching you, just say, ouch. Yeah, yeah. Because your daddy loves, dad's lo he loves us so much. Like I said, he wants to correct us at all times. He don't want us walking in error. No, it hurts his heart to see us walking in error, doing what we want to do. And then we trying to sit there and, and make up excuses to justify and then use the Bible and twist what what must was comfortable for us. Ugh. Oh, y'all, that's a whole different story. So we're going to talk about a little bit about 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. Paul had encouraged Timothy to flee from evil lust and to preach the whole counsel of Christ. Come on. See, see, it, it's something when you got you around that type of environment, there is nothing. All they doing is talking uh, perversion. They all they doing is doing all type of perversion around you. Eventually, that's what's going to bleed onto you. Right. Eventually, it, that's what the, the spirit would do. It attached itself to you. And you were like, whoa, why I got a sense of urgency that I want to watch a uh, a point or why do I have a sense of urgency to self-please myself well, come on y'all yeah you see what I'm saying so that's why it's it's important that you be careful who you connect yourself to come on and then you go home and start dreaming all kind of crazy stuff uh succubus and incubus y'all know them them the sex demons you know that that's coming in there and and and, and arousing you and you say oh okay Maybe this is maybe this is okay since I'm single. Oh no, it's not okay. Or even married people, same thing. No, it's not okay. Ooh, yeah, that's a whole different thing. A whole. Let me get back on point. But it, and then you know that uh, uh, even he 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 further his expression, his grief over certain men who were distorted and the pure gospel of grace and destroying the faith of some by teaching that there was no resurrection. Now, you know, the devil is a liar. Now, that's why I said, what, you, you got to think about, that's why Jehovah Witness don't come to my house. I think they put me on a, on a blacklist. They, they X me out. But yeah, because I'm going to bring the word. I'm going to bring the truth. And I'm going to back it up with the scripture. What? What Bible you got? Matter of fact, you need to burn that Bible up. I'm gonna give you a real Bible. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's why it's important to preach the word, guys. Preach the word. The, the word does not change. Come on. The word. Come on now. See, Timothy particular calling is to is to preach the word. Amen. And the word is the truth 
of the Bible. See, it is a it is the scripture that Paul described just as uh, a, a few verses before as being inspired by God and prof uh, profound and prof and profitable uh, for teaching. And see, for reproof and for correction and for training in righteousness, so that the men of God may be accurate, equipped it for good. Come on, work. Come on. See, 2 Timothy, go down, 2 Timothy 3, up, up, 2 Timothy 3, 6 and 17. Go up one chapter up, y'all. Amen. Amen. And 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17, it said, all scriptures is God's breath and useful for teaching. Come on. Teaching, rebuking, correction, and training in righteousness. That's four things already. Those four instructions. Come on, we might have to put that on the refrigerator. We might have to put that on a post-it note on our computer so you can remember what we're supposed to be doing when it comes to knowing the word, when what we're supposed to be doing is teaching, right? Come on, reproof. Come on, correction and training in righteousness. Not training in uh uh unclean things, not training in unfoolishness, not training in mess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you follow me. Amen. Um, but know that we are to equip them for the good works, for the good works that is ahead of us that we are supposed to be doing. Amen. That's why God said we're supposed to be doing better things. We're supposed to be doing greater things in his name. Why? Why? Why we not? Because we got our own agendas. Oh, I want to teach on grace. I'm going I'm to get a church. I'm going I'm to get my own church and I'm just going to teach on grace. And, and when grace run out, I'm going to teach on grace again and again. No, and then you got people over here that's dying in the, in the pews. Come on. Well, I'm going to teach on prosperity for a year. Just the more you give, the more God's going to give unto you. And we got three offerings and those three offerings is to give for the building fund and, and give water over in Africa to build wells. And this... That, yeah, y'all playing too much. Y'all, y'all get my point. You get my point. And then that prosperity, like I said, I'm just gonna be honest. I yes, I believe in prosperity, but when my soul is poor, come on. When my spirit is dying, come on. Woo! I got a problem with that. I got a problem with that. Come on. Woo! Jesus, help us tonight. And then on verse 17, let me go ahead. 17 says, uh, uh, it says, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So you, you got you to gotta serve at the end of the day. Jesus set the tone, what we are already supposed to be doing. We have to be servers at all costs. Come on. He came to serve. Amen. He came to serve. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. She said unbalanced teaching or selective teaching through document manipulation. Yeah, document manipulation to get what you want. Yes, to get uh to get to get what he can get out of you. You know what I'm saying? That's that dead. We got to be careful because at the end of the day, we check out of here. Lord forbid. And we got to meet the judge. And and you think, oh, I'm going to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to heaven. And then he said, Depart from me. You, you, I don't know you, matter of fact. You, you sins of iniquity. Yeah. So I don't want to be, mm -mm, I don't, I don't want to be in that number because that ain't a good number to be in, guys. Yeah. If you, you get my, get my trip. Okay. So, so Timothy is to preach, which means to proclaim this, uh, not this, not not his verses uh, of the word, but but Timothy is to to preach the word so that the people to whom he ministered uh, may receive the greater benefits that the word provides. And see the Greek word, and I and I might mess this Greek word up because I Greek Greek and Hebrew, I'll be butchering it up. But pray for me, guys. I'm gonna get better one day soon, soon. In Jesus' name, logos. L-O-G-O-S, okay? 
See, the Greek philosophy, it means much more than words. Generally conveils a, 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 in English, it, 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 it includes the idea of the meaning and the purpose for life. See, John says Jesus is the Logos. John 1 and 1 says this well. John first, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Come on. The word was not Frankie. Mm -mm. The word was not Alicia or with Alicia. Come on. I'm just trying to help y'all out. Because you know y'all, we twist some stuff up. Yeah, okay, all right. So Jesus is the source of meaning and purpose because all creation was made by the, uh, by, by the, by, by the, uh, by and through and for, and for him, praise God. So Colossians uh, 1 and 17, Colossians 1 and 17 said, he is before all things. He is before all things, the beginning, come on, and the end, come on, just think about it. So, and in him, all things hold together. In him, in him, see, when you take God out of the equation, you ain't, you got nothing. You, see, you got open space, you, you got nothing there. So, but with him, come on, it's just like the Gorilla Glue holds things together all things together oh i need me some gorilla glue amen and i'm just kidding y'all so you get what i'm saying so you take him out of the equation you open the door for the enemy to come in and he comes in gang banging yeah he don't come solo i always tell y'all that he don't play fair he gonna play he gonna bring his reinforcers he gonna bring his big gun because his job is what to take you out any means necessary. But let me go. Be ready in season and out of season. That's why you can't tell me, well, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm I'm shy. I don't think I I can pray. I don't think see that sound like that's coming from your idea. That's coming from your mind frame, your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. See, we got to remember, we, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, amen? And that's why we got to be ready in season and out of season. So praise God. I remember I was telling them early when I got called, when I first got called into a pastor, let me go when I got called in a pastor and I was sitting under an apostle and she said, okay, next week, Wednesday, I want you to teach Bible study. I'm like, okay, I ain't never taught but Bible study before. Well, which, well, can I get an outline? What I do, what I supposed to be teaching on? How do I teach? Do, what do I do? Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Because if you sitting there under your leader and you see the outline of how they teaching, it, it don't take a rocket science to figure it out because I was always writing anyway. Every time my, my pastor was up there teaching, my bitch was, uh, I'm writing, right. Okay, so... You open up in prayer, then you, you then you do acknowledgement of you know of, of the house, you know, it's called pulpit pulpit etiquette. Okay, acknowledging the house of uh, the leader, you know. So that's stuff that we should automatic get, you know. Oh, amen. We should get grab get get that. Okay, but let me go back. So Timothy is not to exercise his gift to minister to others when it happens to be convenient. Mm. He is to be what? Ready to exercise his gift when convenient. That means in season as well as when not convenient, out of season. Come on, y'all. How you gonna be used by God? How you gonna be stretched by him when you are always you gotta you got stipulations on what you don't want to do? Don't come on. I don't don't I don't ask me, don't do I'm not gonna do it. That sound like a lot of rebellion there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first of all, know that we got to be ready, guys, in season as well as out of season because that's the best way he can use you. That's the best way he can stretch you, amen, as well. Praise God. But also, reproof. See, this is the same root word as 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17 that we read, right? Uh, 
before. See, which says that the scripture is for a reproof. Since Timothy is to preach the word, come on, scripture, it should be expected that his preaching would accomplish the impact of the word, the scripture, which is for a reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be accurate, equipped for every good works. Okay? So you got to know that, guys, that sometimes you have to correct. Sometimes you got to reproof. Come on. Reproof. Same thing. Come on now. But be led. Be led by the Holy Spirit. That's why a lot of leaders that I, I, I have, I mentor some leaders, and, I, and they, they said that they was told that I should be their mentor. I, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not that one watered down pastor. I'm not the one that's going to give you a pacifier. I, they already tell you, general, the general going to give it, thus says the Lord, and it's going to be raw. And all I tell you, you're going to have to get you some big girl pants. Uh -huh. and, and make sure that you sharpen your, your tools and make sure your armor is fit for the battle. Did you catch that? That your armor is fit for the battle. Whoa, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's talk about that rebuke. See, that word could be translated as honor. But it carries the uh, 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 charge of uh, uh, even uh, uh, it, it admonish people to do what is honorable. As well as admonishing them to avoid doing what is dishonoring. A bowl. So... See, so that rebuke, like I said, sometimes don't feel good all the time because it's just like your, your parents. I remember, prime example, mama told me, don't touch that stove. That stove is hot, little girl. And I'll go ahead and touch it anyway and end up getting burnt. Got a mark right now, today. It ain't going away. But anyway. We had to see, was was mama really telling the truth? There one time, I'm glad y'all don't tell big mama this. So one time, since the stove burned me, and she had her, her wig on the edge of the uh, door of the stove, right, of the oven, you know, to get dry, because I guess she was going out that night or whatever. So I was going to help her, you know, assist her, her or whatever was needed to be done. So I stuck it deep down like... <laughs> <laughs> on the door, not on the door, but on the rack of the oven. <laughs> and then y'all already know, a wig burned up. Y'all already know the story. I got in trouble for that. So, <laughs> uh, help me, help me. I thought, hey, I was trying to help her speed the process up. Whatever she was trying to do to that wig, I was like, it's way over here on the door of the oven. How is, what? Uh, it needs some assistance. <laughs> <laughs> y'all already know. But anyway, pray for me, y'all. Just pray for me. Y'all don't tell Big Mama because she gonna, she'll get upset with me all over again. Because she said that was an expensive wig. <laughs> okay. Oh, amen. All right. So, um, exalt. Exalt. That this can be also translated as encourage or be seized. It is an idea of rallying people or getting their attention for the for their own good. Come on. That's why when we do exaltations, come on. When we get in prayer and everything, we begin to exalt God's name, who he is. Come on. I told him, do the alphabet from A to Z, right? Just exalt God. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. Come on. And, and then also encourage. Come on. And you can encourage others and begin to let them know. Hallelujah. I, I said exalt. That's ex exalt, y'all. Ex ex yeah, I did that backwards. So know <laughs> that even encouraging one another. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's important. You know, I don't care if you having a bad day. If you could just encourage, I, I get it all the time. I could be having the worst day and it does not fail. Somebody will call me, so I'm going through something. And I have to go ahead and sit my feelings on the shelf and go ahead and allow the Holy Spirit to use me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So. The next thing, all with great patience and instructions, all with great patience.
exhortation and in, and instruction. See, all Timothy effort was need to be with patience because Timothy purpose is to benefit others, but the goal is not blended bend them to be to to my will. But the goal is to show them that the path that leads to their best interest is for their benefit. See, all of Timothy uh, efforts needed to be or orientated uh, towards. Uh, uh, Timothy's goals is not to be blended people uh, to his will, but it is to what? Equip them to make the best choice they can make. Come on, make the best choice. See, that's wisdom. That's part of the fruits of the spirit. You got to give words of wisdom, words of knowledge. Amen. So know that we just got talked about all with great patience and in, and in instructions, okay? Amen. All right, so the meaning of this is the term of false document and false teaching is what we're gonna be talking about. But most often it refers to a document or teaching that is not right, uh, right, uh, right standards or according to the Bible. See, this is a document that is not true in any way, shape or form. And it is devote, uh, devoid of the in in inspiration of the Holy Spirit that guides one into all truth. See, one person may teach a false document or a group of people who have learned and then taught someone uh, something that is not true, but most often false documents are seen in the religious world, okay? See, these religious uh, 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 do not believe in God of the Bible or, or instead they believe in many gods, Lord G, okay? Such as Allah or, or Bahama or bologna sandwich I, i'm just kidding y'all <laughs> hopefully my apostle not watching this <laughs> i'm gonna get, hit, get in trouble and others okay because i hear people you know say salon i say salon too and salami sandwiches sometimes okay but see um what i'm try <laughs> trying to say guys that these lower g's that's what we talked about, the Greek gods, those are lower G's that a lot of Christians are getting into, okay? And they also are denying the deity, they also denying Jesus Christ as his death on the cross for our sins and much more. And remember I told you I was this, I, I, what was this other thing? It was called Black Craft Culture, Black Craft Culture. And I read up on that and that's what they do. They denied God. They feel like they're good people. They do good justice and everything, but they don't believe in God. So you got, you got, see what I'm saying? You got a lot of this. Well, if I do good deeds, oh, as long as I feed the homeless, I, I, I can make it to heaven. No, salvation don't work on, work like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Salvation don't work on that. On, mm -mm. So let me go down to <laughs> uh, senses, okay? See, another sign that would, uh, S-E-S-U-A-L, y'all. I'm sorry, I was going too fast. Another sign that shows that the documents or the teachings that you may be hearing in the church is false and is that, that it will be uh, sensitive and very appealing to the flesh. See, this is cause, this is the case that many false churches today that just preach false teachings, that they are just there and, and to arouse the flesh and to make the flesh feel good. See, holiness, oh, and sin are no longer preached by many false teachers today, which is sadly indeed. 
Okay. See, the apostle Paul warned us as such uh, in 2 Timothy 4 and 3. He said, where he says that that there that the time will come when most people, what what he said, will not endure sound document of the Bible, but will what? Prefer to listen to the false teachings and 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 or sensibly uh, appealing to the sinful flesh or making the flesh feel good. We talked about that early. Okay. Next denying the deity of Christ, D-E-I-T-Y, okay? Yes. See, false documents from false Christ and false teachers will always deny the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ and claim that he isn't God's manifest in the flesh and that he was just a normal man. Now, the devil is a lie. Now, ain't no way you take all that beating and you're going to tell me that's norm, That's a normal man? Mm. Mm. I'm just saying, the, the first slash, lash, I probably would have just played dead. Oh! Just been quiet. Just play dead. <laughs> I, 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 when I seen Passion of Christ, that was enough. When they was ripping his skin off, he was disfigured. His fa- oh, it was just was done. I, I like, I get the message. I got, I got, I know what you're trying to say. I couldn't stomach it no more. So that's why I just said I couldn't, I couldn't take it. I'll just go ahead and play dead. Okay. Anyway, First John four and three. First John four and three. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. Oh, did you hear what I said? But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. So let me talk to my yoga people, my people that's doing Christian yoga, as long as you meditate and use the scriptures uh, pertaining to um, that specific setting, that it's okay. God knows my heart. No, I'm I'm finna tell you, the devil is a lie. You can't mix the two together, okay? You can't bow down to God is, because that's lower G, God's plural, okay? Amen. So this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard and is coming, and even now is already in the world it's already in the world okay it's already here y'all it's uh, believe it or not we, we were just one of the prophets said it, you, you don't be surprised what may go on you might see folks on the street having sex don't be don't be shocked it, anything gonna go you're gonna see them shooting up they already smoking weed in the bus at the bus stop come on doing things openly and i'm like i was not trying to inhale that okay no i was not at the bus stop but i'm just saying when you drive by you see yeah folks don't respect have respect for the elders or anything anymore not even themselves well let me go ahead so this is why that wait a minute she said wait a minute i gotta i gotta read this sister alicia said be set apart no compromising through yoga crystal tarot cards that's right manifesting uh manifesting positive energy where is that at where is that in the bible you know so that's what that's what we're talking about all they they're doing too much doing too much you know i i hear people i i want power well, you got power if you say sanctify and fill with the Holy Ghost. You got the power within you. Hello. I'm just helping y'all. Y'all going into these other stuff. And I'm just saying, those are opening doors, a demonic activity that you ain't really ready for. I'm telling you, you, you can't help. You ain't gonna be able to handle the truth. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you get free tonight. So don't, don't be you know well i got this crystal you know this is to protect me <clears throat> yeah okay protect you from what oh evil spirits no that's bringing them that's attracting them actually uh-huh 
because that's an idol. Oh, oh, that you didn't know. You, sh, the, the, God said, "Don't." He's a jealous God. <clears throat> Don't have no other God before me. Amen. Amen. Wow. So as we were saying in John, one, why in John one, um, four and three tells us that any spirit that doesn't confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is the spirit of the Antichrist. And there is a lot of such antichrist, false documents and false teaching preaching on the church pulpits today. Yeah, you, you wanna have a CBD uh, facility a distributor in your church so you can bring the young folks in that smoke weed. Okay, that ooh, sound like a drug dealer to me on the low low. Oh yeah, that's it, that's it. So, um. Y'all gotta get rid of that hustle. What they say, I'm a hustle uh, mentality. Get rid, rid of that. Yeah, y'all gotta get delivered from that. Yes, yes, hallelujah. So there are many false churches or even cults, uh, 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 cults that that teaches that Jesus Christ was never manifest in the in the flesh and that he wasn't the Son of God to begin with. Be careful with such false documents. And avoid the false teachers who teach in such foolishness. I said it. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. All right. Next one. Materialistic. You know a person always chasing money. Come on. Idolize money. Come on. Mam mammon. Come on. Y'all know that. About that. See, materialness uh, will also be one of the signs of a false document that you will see if you seen uh spend more time hearing these false teachings devote devote the devout uh void devoid of the truth that aren't even in the bible okay see someone who uh has a false teacher that will always talk about materialistic stuff you know we was talking about prosperity that's all they teach about is prosperity and they got 10 books on prosperity and how to get wealth and yeah but then y'all need to start testing the spirit by the spirit come on is the fruits inspect the fruits i'm just saying and when they talk about the material the materialistic things and, and riches instead of the gospel and, and and just take just omit repentance and salvation and that we all desperate need it guys we do we desperate need a savior we we do see this is uh, it has become a a trend in most churches that don't preach about sin anymore come on what's wrong with that picture i just heard crickets in the background. Mm. Well, see, because if I don't deal with my stuff, my baggages, I I ain't got to worry about mm, exposing yours. See, it, I just say it's still mandatory. Holiness is still mandatory. Righteousness is still mandatory. All right. Amen. Um, so the so these false teachers uh, perpetrate these false documents and forget what Jesus Christ said. And I'm gonna give you a scripture, Luke uh, 12 and 15. Luke 12 and 14. Okay. See, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Come on, life does not consist in a abundance of prosperity, uh, uh, possession, I'm sorry, abundance of possessions, okay? So that abundance uh, of one's life doesn't consist of what they have materially. See, I want the things that is spiritual. I don't know about y'all. I want the things that is spiritual because I always tell you the things that's material uh, um, things are temporary, but the things that is spiritual is eternal. Come on, y'all. Get, I hope you get the memo. I oh, don't see. What is, it, what is the gain, the man to gain the whole world? Then it's so to perish. Mm -mm, mm -mm, 
Mm-mm. That's why so many folks depressed now. Money can't buy your happiness. Come on. But money can't buy your family. Money can't buy love. Come on. All right. So let's talk about the contradicting the Bible. These are the signs of false documents and teaching. Yes, ma'am. Earthy things are temporary, but the spiritual things are internal. Absolutely. Um, any false documents taught by a false teacher or false prophet will always contradict God's word. That is why it's a false document or false teaching in the first place. See, there are many such false documents and uh, uh, heresies that, that today that have nothing to do with the scripture and directly contradict God's word in many ways. And you need to be aware of least, 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 at least that you get uh, because you don't want to get deceived by them. Okay. See, this is why that second uh, Peter two and one, second Peter two and one talks about it, but there is, it, it were also false prophets among the people, just as there was false teachers among you. See, they, they were secretly introduced and destructive heresies and even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Did you hear that? Brought swift destruction. Come on. That, that just destruction. Come on. When you walk in disobedience, when you walk in a rebellion, same thing, that immediately brings destruction against your house. Okay? So it warns us that about the false teachers with the false teachers' uh, teachings and destructive heresies that we need to be aware of any avoid and, and, and avoid them at all costs to avoid getting deceived by them. Amen. All right. So I got like nine, and I think I'm on, I might be on number three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back in. I'm going to get this book and we're going to read these five. Uh, um, pages, and then I'm going to go back. Don't forget, y'all, I'm on number four. I'm going to write it down because I'm going to jump back in. Avoid teachings. Okay, amen. So I'll write it down because I'm going I'm to dismiss Fran because this girl has been pointing all week. Her daughter just turned 15, so that's my baby. That's my baby. All right, Fran. Let's go ahead and do this thing so we, we can end this book so for we can take a break. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know what's so weird? My daughter's birthday was yesterday. My sister-in-law, her birthday is today. And then my husband's brother, his wife, her birthday's tomorrow. Yeah. Three days in a row. <laughs> Amen. Um, Amen. I, well, yeah. I'm ready. I was okay. busy. Amen. Okay. How to recognize true and false doctrines. The day of your watchman has come. The day God visits you. Now is the time of their confusion. Malachi 7 and 4, or uh, Makai 7 and 4, sorry, Makai 7 and 4. We are living in the last days, days of confusion. There are, these are the prophetic days in which it is difficult to distinguish the good and the bad, what is real and what is not, the, the legitimate and the things that are fantasy. However, our God has anticipated these times, and he has left us specific instructions to guide us in the days of tribulation. God has established a covenant with his people. If we pay attention to the word, we will be able to discern truth from false teachings. The following are biblical guidelines to, dis to distinguish between true and false doctrine. Number one, any doctrine that places the Bible 
on the same level as 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 all other common books is false. The Bible, the Word of God, is above all and superior to all writ all other written works. I will praise you with my whole heart, for you have magnified your word above all your name. Psalms 138, 1 and 2. The Bible is above all the opinions or wisdom of men. It is above whatever the mind may say or opinionate. It supersedes all the intelligence of the wise, the geniuses, all politician is above all. Any doctrine that puts the Bible under a question of doubt, whether in, in totally or in part, is taking the risk of removing its virtue from those who are not firm in their faith and understanding of the true divine inspiration of the sacred scripture. The Bible is divinely inspired without defect or errors. It is divine revelation given by inspiration of God. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sheer, making wise the simple. Psalms 9, 19, and 7. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Romans 11 and 33. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is prof profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be completely and through and throughly equipped for every good work. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Number three. The doctrines that try to accommodate the passage of the Bible to permit their ab abominable sins and try to combine the biblical and sanctified teaching with the times, trends, and different movements are false doctrines. Any doctrine that tries to change the significance of Scripture by removing its virtue as questionable is a false doctrine. God does not change. He is unchangeable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's word, his commandments, and his promises are unchangeable, immutable, internal, and infallible. For I am the Lord. I do not change. Malachi 3 and 6. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear, not the small smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Matthew 5 and 18. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 and 8. Number four, when doctrine denies the basic an infallible teaching of the sacred scriptures, such as the existence of heaven, hell, the Trinity, and such, and instead sub substitutes their own logic and human rationality. They are false. Number five, any doctrine that sets the Bible as a historical book and of little importance, causing people to lose their interest in it and to see all things as in the past and not for today, is a false doctrine. The plan of God is to elevate his word and confirm it in all times, Jeremiah 1 and 12, and to show the world that the Bible is true and real, is the fount of all wisdom, and is powerful today. Psalms 119, 97 through 104, 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Mark 16 and 20. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Hebrew 4 and 12. Number six, all doctrines that try to put veils on the sacred 
scriptures and try to impede the people who read it, hiding behind such thoughts as it is only for the wise and not all can can or should read it, are false and erroneous. In many cases, the pro propagators of these doctrines can change certain words or certain passages by adding explanation or personal opinions. They take advantage of many people and guide them to accept things as they believe or opinionate, but they do not realize that they pervert the free will given by God to man to choose and decide for themselves their final destination according to what, what God teaches in his holy word. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the word of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. Revelation 1 and 3, see also John 5 and 39. Number seven, any doctrine that tries to mix or complete the word of God with human opinion or other books, giving them the same value and authority as the Bible is false. Only the, the Bible is divinely inspired. It is true that there are many other books that help us to understand with more clarity some difficult passages. But none of these are divinely inspired or could replace the word of God. We believe that the only foundation of divine inspiration is the sacred scriptures, and they are unique in their totality. Notes on false doctrines. Any doctrine or teaching that denies or in any manner causes doubt or unbelief concerning all the things taught in the scriptures is inspired by demons. Any religion that denies the inspiration of the Bible or the reality of God as a person or that denies Christ as the divine son of God, his pre-existence, his virgin birth, his divinity, his miraculous and mysterious supernatural power, his burial, his resurrection and corporal manifestation after his resurrection, his ascension or his second coming to establish his kingdom forever is of Satan's origin. Ooh, Jesus. Any doctrine that denies the Christian experience, such as the new birth, the cleansing of sin, living free from sin, divine health, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, miracles and signs that follow, those who believe, answers to prayer, the fulfilling of the promise for health, happiness, prosperity, and many other Christian experience of the, of the New Testament, Satan, demons, sickness, sin, the fall of man, the creation of everything by God, and man as a mortal being is a false doctrine. 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 Come on, Ooh, sis. Okay. Jesus. I'm going to give her a break. She's going to be ready to preach in a minute, y'all. When she get hyped like that, she be ready to preach and run at the same time. <laughs> Amen. All right. So we're going to talk about the rules to recognize. The rules to recognize. See, true sound document will elevate the word of God above all. It will always give its pre pre mental place. What's that? Pre implementing place. And the word of God is the foundation of a living, a fountain, I'm sorry, of the living word that cleanses and restores and transforms mankind. See, sanctify them by your word. Your word is truth. And that's John 17 and 17. And see also 2 Timothy 3 and 16, uh, verse 3, I mean, chapter 3, verse 16. See, the Bible is persist and full of wisdom. It reveals to all men the dangers of living apart from, a, from God and the parents of the and the parents of, of hell. See, the, the, the word of God extends an invitation to man to repent and partakes of eternal life. See, it reveals clearly that the unity of perfection of one God in three de in de destines uh, person, I'm sorry, um, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, hell exists as 
uh, I mean, exists and is the is a place that prepares for the final judgment of Satan and his angels. See, it's also a place for all of those that who who and after hearing of the love of God and the provision who made for the forgiveness of their all of their sins, harden themselves and never repent. For this reason, they will be cast into hell forever. See, the serpents. The, the, the board of, of vapors and how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Matthew 23, verse 33. See, but I will show you uh, whom you should fear. Fear him who after he has killed has power to cast into hell. Yes, I said to you, fear him. Luke 12, verse 5. And also Matthew 28, verse, um, Matthew 10, verse 28. And Matthew's 18, 9. Okay. See, so it was the bigger, uh, it was the beggar death and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. See, the rich man also died and was buried and being in torment in hell, hell, Hades. And he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar over and Lazarus in the bosom. Can I get the water? Hey, in hell, I'm sure you, I'm just, yeah, I'm just paraphrasing. Okay. So Luke 16, verse 22 and 23. Luke 16, verse 22, verse 23. See, the Bible teaches us that the hell, hell is real. And it and it 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 does resist, it does exist. I'll say. And the Bible also speaks of heaven as a place of peace and tranquility where there will be no crying or pain or where Christ will dwell and wipe away all of your tears from your eyes. See, but I say to you, I do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Matthew 5, verse 34. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Matthew 6, 9 through 10. See, by laying up for yourself treasures in heaven, whether neither mark, moth nor rust destroys, Matthew 6, verse 20. The Bible presents to us the existence of only one su uh, supreme God in the three destines, uh, distincts, distincts, for persons what's that distinct persons any document or uh, any documents that teaches the contrary or puts doubt in the in these truth is of uh, the devil see the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all amen second corinthians 13 and 14 see for there are three that bear witness in heaven the father the word Christ, John 1 and 1, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one, John 5 and 7. Sound doctrines allow man to affirm in his heart all the promises of God. See, we can take them serious, believing and, and profiting from them. Psalms 119, 9 through 10. And that from childhood that you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 3.15. Sound doctrines guides the believers to have an effective and diplomatic faith in God. It teaches us to believe in its potentials, it pow its power and perfection. God's sound doctrines will give us good judgment and clear understanding about all the evil and the error in the world. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning that we through the, the patience and the comfort of the scripture might have hope. Romans 15 verse four. Sound documents is found upon the eternal promises of God. See, all, all the teachings of the sound documents would lead a person to a clear understanding of, uh, of righteousness. And it would teach us the believers to triumph over all evil and to use good judgment. It teaches believers how to overcome adversaries' thoughts uh, through absolutely uh, faith in Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4, 13. 
See, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldliness, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. That's a now thing, not later, now. Titus 2, verse 11 through 12. Sound documents place Jesus Christ as the Lord of Lords and the Savior of all mankind. Amen. See, as the only medi uh, mediator between God and man, he is the same always, yesterday, today, and forever. First Timothy 2, verse 5, and Hebrews 13, verse 8. Christ is the only one who can save. He invites us to confess our sins to him with confidence because he has the power to forgive us, restore us, cleanse us, and sanctify us. And he has given us authority to, to reign with him forever. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 through 11. Hebrews 4, verse 15 through 16. See, Christ does not accuse or despise us. He directs us and help us to conquer all bondage of the en enemy, such as bad habits, curses, evil spirits, disputions, dis dis distributions, disturb disturb disturbance, and sin. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, 28. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will, will by no means cast out. John 6, 37. See, then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. John 8. Verse 12. See also John 14, verse 6. Sound doctrines allows the, the believers to understand the greatness and debt of God's love. God love towards man is seen through the thousands of promise in his word. It helps us understand and love the word of God in a deeper way and guiding us to make wise decisions that builds our faith and our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Only by the strong and the very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commands you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it for when you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success joshua 1 7 8 joshua 1 7 8 i love the fact that it because we've been talking about prosperity all day uh but did you see did you read the things before in order to to have prosperity, so it's like you can't take things, you can't take bits and pieces out. Uh, that you, you, you it's a, it's an order. It's, it's instructions in order to be prosperous, and to be in order to, to be uh, in good success. You, you got to follow the outline. It's just simple. It's simple. It's not complicated. The world makes it difficult. His yoke is easy. Amen. His burden is light. It's just the enemy makes it seem difficult than it is. And that's what his job is to deceive. Amen. Amen. So if any questions, you guys have any questions, y'all can go ahead and post it on Facebook. But I'm going to go ahead and go into Number four, because I, I, I almost forgot if it was good, it was good thing Sister Alicia put number four. I thought I wrote it on my 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 notebook so I I wouldn't forget. I promise I was gonna take I was gonna go to the end of this um and get done with this. Amen. All right, so number four doesn't lead people to repentance. 
Okay, so we're talking about, okay, what false documents and false teachers and, and false prophets, all that, you know, so I'm just putting, getting y'all back to where we were at. Um, and thank y'all for being patient with us, amen, because we wanted to finish this book tonight because we wanted to take our three weeks um, break so we can be able to go back over the word and be able to chew on it a little bit more and get more understanding of it. So number four was doesn't lead, amen, people to repentance. Thank you, Sister Alicia, she got it. So any teaching or doctrine that doesn't lead people to repentance is from God, but from Satan himself, as he wants many people to go with him to hell as possible. Yeah, he's recruiting. He, he's he's de definitely on his job when it comes to uh, building the kingdom of darkness. So just know that. He rather for the people be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Okay. All right. So, and, and the best way of doing that is to ensure that the, 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 the documents of repentance isn't taught in many churches today. And it seems to have a success as many false teachers don't talk about sin or repentance anymore, but only money or riches. Woo! We already in them last days. Oh, we already there. We're already there, okay? When I'm dying spiritually, you, you can't feed me, you can't help me, but you want to tell me about how to have a, own a whole block of houses. Oh, okay, oh, all right, that's a whole different thing. All right, so a true prophet, it, where the real prophets, Take a stand. Would they stand up? Hallelujah. A true prophet or a teacher of God will always preach the word. Come on. Sound documents of repentance. Because Jesus command all people to repent and they will likewise perish if they don't do so. Luke 13, 5. Luke 13, verse 5. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. I, I didn't write the Bible. Don't shoot the messenger. All right, I'm just telling you. All right. Next, number five, create strive and division. Create strive and division. Okay. See, false teachings and false uh, teachings will create a strife and division among the believers. And there are many examples in the New Testament that proves this fact. See, for example, there were uh, legalism uh, Jew, uh, Jews uh, who taught that believers must be circumcised and observe uh, Jewish laws like keeping the Sabbath, eating kosher food, and etc. But Paul categorized that rejecting them as false teachers. Galatians 2, verse 3 through 5. Galatians chapter 2, verse 3 and 5 reads, And yet, not even Titus, who was with me, was compelled to, the, to be circumcised, even though that he was a Greek. This matter arose uh, because some false believers had infiltrate our ranks to spy on the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus and to make us slaves. So we do, did not give in to them for a moment so the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. See, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10 said, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another and what you say and that there will be no division among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind, mind, and thoughts. See, the, the scripture tells us that we must all agree on what we say as Christians. Come on, stop cursing each other. Come on. I ain't talking about profanity. I'm talking about those word curses that comes out of your mouth. Come on. Uh, about your sister, about your brother, about your husband. Come on, y'all. 
jealousy and the division and the strife must not even be named among us, but must be united with one purpose and one mind, which is lacking in many churches today. As my sister Alicia said, it's sad. It's sadly sad. I, I, I can see why COVID came. I can see because we, I'm just saying, we was, we was doing our own thing. We thought we had it all together. We had our own agenda mapped out. I'm going to do A, A, B, C, D. Yeah. I'm gonna interrupt. News flash. I'm going to interrupt your, your program. Come on. I'm going to change your agenda. Oh, my God. Because I need you, I need you to go back to the, I need you to go back to the manufacturer uh manual. Come on, that's that biblical foundation. We lost it. We lost it. We was ha we was oh, we was we was living in large. Come on, we was living in hot cotton. Oh, and you got people over here spiritually dying. You got people over here. Yes, absolutely. So next fool of opinions of men full of opinions of men see false doctrine will will lack the truth of god's word and will be full of opinions of men and not that of of the bible and are usually carnal in nature see jesus christ warned us about listening to the documents the doctrines of men and mark 7 and 7 mark 7 verse 7 it said they worship me in vain their teachings are merely human rules mm, we talked about that human rules programs my own agenda Okay, so which are um, Amer basically means my own opinions and and my own commandments, a man that usually brings bondage to a unsuspected hearers of them. Mm, wonder why some of us so bound. Wonder why. See, there are many such false documents that that are destructive and her in heresies in the church today that have no truth of God's word in them that have enslaved many church members who listen to them and have forgotten the gospel of liberty the Bible teaches. Amen. Number seven, promote sin. I remember a person coming to me was talking about deliverance and they went to one of their church ministers in the church and they was dealing with some stuff. They was being harassed, harassed, tormented, influenced by demons. And they, and I, and I suggest that they sit down cause they was, they was working in the ministry and uh, I told him, I said, I, I used to be a co-pastor for a season. And I, I, I'm just letting you know, you need to sit, sit out until you get healed. So he went to the minister in the church. The minister said, hey, all of us dealing with something. I don't need to see what is a reason for you to sit down for one you laying hands on people and you got some unclean baggage in your closet. Uh-huh. So that's why I suggest you to be seat, to be seat, to, to be set out, to sit down till you get healed. Yeah. So yeah, so when people don't understand deliverance, then they gonna tell you, give you the wrong advice. Girl, it don't take all that deliverance. They just overkill. They just doing too much. That girl, as long as you save, go to church and, and read your Bible and, and and you can still shack and, and, and still sleep around with Jodeci. Ooh, okay. All right. So that gets to my next, 
Yes, lesson. Promote sin. Promotes sin. See, I was like, where, where is the conviction come should come from that it should come within? Come on. See, another sign that will show that you you you, you the, the, the documents are. Uh, of, or teachings that you may be hearing from any teacher or pastor of the church, the pulpit is false, is that will promote sin rather than condem condemning it. And I remember a pastor once said, once said, I think somebody sent me this. He had preached these, I'm, a, I'm being nice, these Gordon twos ain't faithful. And, I, and I'm going to make it real quick crystal clear these ho ho merry christmas ain't faithful when they got caught up in adultery and had a child out of mm, ah that's what we say folks need to sit down to get healed because you're bleeding all over the place and, and don't you know that perverted spirit that's coming from the head is bleeding on onto the sheep I, I, I'll be afraid to have that blood on my hand. When I'm so into the money, I got to preach, 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 because I get more, 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 more money when no, when I need to sit down for a season to get healed. Oh, my God. Help us, God, be free and stop slaying your sheep. See, this is why um, we, we're going to talk about the, the many model uh, false teachers today or teaching false teaching and false doctrines that aren't even in God's word that are promoting sin, which is why all moral uh, 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 perversion or, or such as uh, homosexual and lesbians are accepted even in the church today. Mm, you got leaders, I mean, praise teams, uh, homosexual. You got keyboard player uh, shacking with the same sex. And you know this as a leader? Mm, that's why they didn't like coming to my office. Because if I seen them on Facebook or heard something, we're going to sit down, we're going to talk about this. Matter of fact, you're going to sit down from the praise team and get your deliverance get healed come on get some counseling first first we're gonna get delivered we're gonna bypass the counseling because we need to get you delivered from that perverted spirit that lust demon amen so this is why uh second peter 2 verse 2 through 4 second peter 2 verse 2 through 4 see many will follow their the, the, they they uh, deprive their conduct and will bring the way of truth to disrupt it see in their grieve these teachers will ex explore you with fabricational stories and their condemnation has long been hanging over them and their destruction has not been sleeping. See, for God, if God, for if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell and put them in chains of darkness to be hell for judgment. See, these are the warnings of such false teachers and sadly reveals that they that many unex, uh, unsuspecting uh, deceived followers will follow the destructive ways of such false teachers who denied and suppressed the truth they speak evil of. My heart goes out. See, number eight, and I'm almost done. Does, does not promote holiness. Write that down. Does not promote holiness. That's a red flag. That's a red flag. See, holiness and righteousness are very important in the lives of all true believers in Christ as they are the only things that will make one go to heaven as without them. You won't see the Lord. 
Hebrews 12 and 14 says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. See, I don't, I don't think we, we know what holiness is, what holy means. Holy, I know, in between uh, or gray area of unclean versus just, you know. So it, 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 it's, it's a standard. You, it, it's, it's, be separated. Be holy as I am holy. Uh, that, that was just pertaining to yeah that was just pertaining to god that didn't that didn't mean that i gotta be holy too now i i hear a lot of people say i ain't god so i'm i'm just basically doing whatever i want to do see without holiness no one will see the lord see if you don't practice a life of holiness then your christian faith is worthless and sadly, many false teachers today by false teachers don't promote holiness, but encourage you to fulfill the sinful desires of the flesh. See, as false teachers, our documents, the documents that will come from the mouth of a false teacher or a false apostle will never promote holiness because they are not holy in the first place. Come on. I'm, I, right now, I'm just, I, I'm just hoping you catch that in the spirit realm. Amen. Amen. All right. Help us, God. Let our leaders, whoever, ministers, fivefold ministry, whoever, spread it in the gospel and say they, they about you. My God, Lord, just let this let this word penetrate their hearts, God. Yes, soften their hearts, oh God, that they receive the reproof. Amen. Well, number nine, full of vain religion, full of vain religion. Last but not least, false teachers and false doctrines are usually religious in nature but or aboard of the truth religion that is undefiled unspotted from the presence from this present evil world james 1 27 james 1 verse 27 talks about it see religion that god our father accept as pure and faultless is this and to look after the orphans and the widows and their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by this crazy world. Okay, I just add a lip, y'all. Crazy, because it's, it's crazy out there. See, the vain religion that false document promotes are usually mere uh, corrupted traditions and, and commandments of men that can be seen in both the Old Testament and in the times of Israel and the New Testament among the scribes and the Pharisees through Jesus' time. Okay? The religious leaders was the Pharisees and the, and the uh, Sadducees in the New Testament. Okay? All right. So very often the, um, the religion false doctrine promotes is vain or empty and can't it can't give you salvation it, it just can't it can't give it can't get you there it, it, it can't free you from your bondage of sin or your eternal life as a religion isn't what saves one from sin but the personal relationship with the lord jesus christ is what does See, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away uh, uh, disciples after them. So be on your guards, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that for three years, I, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Acts 20, verse 29 through 31. Acts 20, 
verse 29 through 31, and it reads, I know that after I leave, savage wolves, savage wolves will come in among you and they will not spare the flocks. Even from your own number, number men will rise and distort the truth in order to draw, draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. With such warning from God's word, we should not be surprised to find that in every age of church of God has been tied by the disease and the errors of man who concerns the faith with were reprobated. See, we shouldn't expect such things and watch and stand firm and not be shaken. See, there have always been false brethren and false teachers as they were formerly false apostles and false prophets and even false Christ. Please, will the real prophets take a stand? Now, as I end this, give me like five minutes and I'm going to wrap this up. How do I recognize and flee from false prophets? Oh, I'm glad you asked. First of all, test all prophets. The Bible says in 1 John 4 and 1, 1 John 4 verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit with whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. And the best way to recognize a false prophet is by testing the spirit behind the prophet. So now, how do you test these spirits? Amen. Amen. Next, check the prof prophecies through the eyes of the scripture. Check their prophecies through the eyes of the scripture. See, if the prophecy that they, they, they give you do not align with the word of God, then it should become clear to you who they are serving. Okay? You can also test them by the fruits. Matthew 16 and 9, 19 talks about that. Matthew 16 verse 19 says, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes and th of thrones or fruit? figs and th thresholds even so every good tree brings forth good fruit but a corrupted tree brings forth evil fruit so when you check their lifestyles and their things that they do you will find a trace of full or full actions acts of of unrighteousness on display see for example a prophet that claims to be a true prophet of God, but has no trace of fruits of the spirit. And we know the fruits of the spirits of what? Peace, love, joy, gentleness, come on, patience, meekness, self-control, kindness, and etc. Okay. That's a red flag of a false prophet if there's no fruits. See, know the word next. Know the word of God. That's why y'all got to know it for yourself. You got to study what to show yourself approved. Second Timothy 2 verse 15. Second Timothy 2 and 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth as Christ, it, as, as Christians. It is important that you study the word of God by yourself and don't just get acquainted. Study to know the, the mind of God regarding any difficult situations you are in. So when you know the will of God, it will be easy for you to avoid false prophecy and false prophet. Stop running after the prophets, them, them, them false prophets, like, like, like fortune tellers. You remember y'all psychic read, y'all remember uh, Cleo, y'all used to call it, what's the lady name? Cleo, whatever name back then. Yeah, so stop running after them. Y'all should have a relationship with God that y'all can know and hear God for yourselves. Amen. Next, build a good relationship with the Holy Spirit. Build a good relationship with the Holy Spirit. John 14, verse 26. John 14, 
verse 26. But the comfort which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, the Holy Spirit is that comfort promised by Jesus Christ. So when you build a good relationship with the Holy Spirit, he will teach you all things, including how to recognize uh, false prophets and their evil prophecy. See, he will comfort you in all situations and remind you of the word of God that has been stored up in your heart. Next, trust God with all of your heart. Trust in God with all of your heart. Seek for answers and solutions. Desperately can make one a prey in the hands of the false prophet. And this is why it's important that you put your total trust in God and rely on him totally for your prayers to be answered. And don't try to peep into your future, even if you wanted to ask God for a divine re re uh, revelation. Last but not least, pray until prayers are answered. That's why I said pray without ceasing. Come on. See, Laziness to prayer and commune with God has pushed many into the hands of false prophets. Building your prayer life such that you can ask for everything in prayer and keep asking until your prayer is answered. I want to be like that woman with when she went to the judge or was at the king she went to and she was just constantly begging him for a specific thing and he's like just give after so long just give her whatever she wants just so she can stop nagging me <laughs> I'm like, but now after a while i'm just saying when i'll be asking god after a while I just say lord let me just go ahead and start thanking you how about that let me just go ahead and put a praise on it hallelujah yeah let me let me let me go ahead and deposit one of those uh, uh -huh, thanksgiving prayers thanking you as though i see it and that's what the faith is the substance of the things i cannot see so I'm going ahead and praise you for it. Is is it already done in Jesus' name? Let me go ahead and pray. I got three minutes. I did well. We did well, y'all. To God be the glory. But let me say this. Um, guys, I appreciate you guys. But like I said, oh, man, this is such good, good meat, guys. And I just want y'all to be able to take bite sizes of it and begin to digest it as you read it for yourself it's like uh pastor fran said go to the videos because the videos definitely or is very very enlightening as well amen all right let me go and pray you guys out and first of all oh let me tell you this we got two events coming up july the 14th through the 16th we got our 14th annual fresh anointing women's retreat and it's going to be located in Florence, and Missouri. And we just let you know that the cost right now is 200 per person. That's double occupancy. I think we're down to maybe four more. Uh, I think we got four more openings, guys. I think it's, it's really, it's, we were setting out for 25. I like to lock in at, at less at 25 because I like doing small events. Less work for me, y'all. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. Well, we done had a big one time, 85, and I was wore out. My husband tell you, I went in my bedroom and locked the door. My grandkids was living with me at that time. He said, y'all don't mess with granny because granny had a rough weekend. Yes, I did. Only letting my husband in the room, but uh, grandkids had to stay out for a day until I could regroup. Amen. But let me pray you guys out. Whew. Oh, oh. So also August the 26th, a night of miracles. We're going to have at the Hilton Airport and the registration fee is $25 uh, and vendor fees are 50. So guys, inbox me if y'all interested in that. Facebook me, email me, however, uh, if you're interested in it and to uh, be a part of this because it, it's going to be powerful, guys. We're going to Signs, wonders, miracles, prophecy. I know y'all want the prophecy. I know. We're going to get y'all that. Prophecy, healing, sickness. Because, hey, as believers, we are already supposed to be doing the work. So, 
Amen. Come on in and get some good teaching and, and get and and get come with great expectations, expecting a miracle, a breakthrough. Amen. 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 Lord, I thank you, God, for delivering us right now from every false prophet of this time in the mighty name of Jesus. Every prophet that is not of God trying to manipulate us from the right way of righteousness to the other way. We decree and declare that the Lord will destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus and establish us in your power and the knowledge of your word and that we will be able to discern every false prophets around us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you right now to empower each and every one of us, oh God, that all that any uh, false prophets that will not be able to overpower us again, oh God. Father, in the mighty name, of Jesus, I ask you, God, to deliver us from the hands of the manipulators that that calls themselves prophets. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, I ask you to help us, oh God, uh, to be deep, deeply rooted in Your Word, that we may be able to stand against every evil prophecy. In the mighty name of Jesus, we stand against every false prophet and their household and with the power in the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to expose every negative and false prophet in our community in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, begin to destroy and put to shame every uh, evil device of false prophets in the land in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, ask those uh, false, uh, those false that who are uh, watering down your word with human, uh, 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 um, human uh philosophies and and arrest their uh hearts and cause them to repent of their or sins in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree herefore that every plan and agenda of false prophets over our life is destroyed now in the mighty name of Jesus. I put it under the blood of Jesus. Father, begin to destroy every false prophet teaching that lunches evil into our family in the mighty name of Jesus. And every false prophet that's bring a strange a uh, 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 strain on the on the church of God. We we come against you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we decree that every false prophet and their household shall be uh, put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, standing, we standing on your word, and I decree that every plan of a false prophet to disrupt the plan of God for our life is destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we lose humility and self-control and, and truth and righteousness and holiness. And a Holy Spirit began to convict and began to correct us, oh God. Re allow us to have a repentance heart. And I declare and decree that everything must line up with the word and the will of God. In Jesus' name we pray. And the saints say, amen. 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 Hi, Janita. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're done. We're done, guys. We about to take a break. Pastor, Pastor Apostle got to take a break. Got to take a break. Yes, getting ready for the next battlefield. Got to replenish, got to retreat. Come on and get, hey, yes, yes, yes. And get ready for the next battlefield. Amen. The next battle, I'm sorry, that we getting ready um, to go be pushed into. So July, I already told you, we're getting that the women's retreat. And then August, boom, we're getting the night of miracles. Amen. So you guys continue keeping Apostle Francello and Deacon McCoy in your prayers, which y'all do. Please. Please, 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 please do that. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hugs and kiss to all of you. Amen. I love you even more. Uh, that's Trinita. Yeah, that's Trinita. I see. You. Amen. Thank you, Sister Alicia, for being a great note taker. Love you, love you. Michelle Dixon, thank you so much for joining us. Amen. Please continue to share the love. Let's continue walking in love and be about our father's business and continue building the kingdom, God's kingdom. Amen. God bless you. May God keep you forever. Keep you in his perfect peace. Love you guys. Who says? Love you. Bye-bye.